Where's our, where's our leader? <laughs> Good morning. I like that. Happy Halloween. <laughs> uh, welcome everyone to our service today at Central Christian. And if we have any guests with us today, welcome. And we're glad you we're able to be with us today. As a reminder, we have these attendance pads that are at the end of every pew. Be sure to sign them, pass them along down the row. Um, we just much greatly appreciate that. So with that, um, we're going to turn it over to the praise band. What? Huh? Yeah, you're right. Good morning, everybody. As you can see, we are a couple of people short of the band this morning, so we're depending on you to make up the difference, okay? Come out of sadness, wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let's rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Lay down your burden. Lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. Lay down your head. Lay down your heart. There's hope for the hopeless. All those who stray, come sit at the table. Come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary. Rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. Lay down. Lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. Lay down your hurt. Lay down your heart. There is joy for the morning. Oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burden. Lay down your shame. All who are broken. Your face, oh wonder, come home. You're not too far. Lay down your head, lay down your heart, come as you are.
penny roll that goes away. When you add out on the street and you really get it down. When you add out on the street and there's no place to go. When you add out on the street, well, Jesus gonna save your soul. sky ain't bright and blue when you wake up in the morning and the big world's after you when you wake up in the morning well Jesus gonna pull you through cause Jesus is the rock Yeah, I looked at myself in the mirror this morning and it cracked, I'll tell you what. Well, so glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Shadows of this life have gone. I fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown. I fly away. Well, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah. By and by. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away 
Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the life you have so richly given us. Thank you for the incredible blessing of being your sons and daughters and for the intricate and beautiful creations you have made us to be. Lord, we give you all that we are and ask that we might engage with your spirit today. It's through your son's Jesus name that we pray. Amen. Do we have any children this morning for come forward for children's moment? Tell them we have candy. Yeah, come on up. I think I may have to stand for this one. I'm a little nervous. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay, I'll sit down. Let's all sit down. Ah, oh, what a nice prop. Yep. All right, look what I got here. Yep. I got candy. You're all going to get some unless you grab for it. Okay, if you grab for it. You don't get any. Pretty simple rule. All right. So um, could we all agree that this is probably good? You think if you get this in your mouth, it's probably good? What do you think? Yeah? So you would like some of this. Is that what you're saying? Because it's good? Oh, okay. All right. Well, here, I'm going to sit down. Sit down. Hold on now. Let's be at peace. All right. I'm going to try some in front of y'all. Now, I, I like Snickers, all right? So I'm going to try Snickers. Ugh. That's terrible. I thought you guys said this was good. I got the wrapper on it. Well, what does that have to do with anything? You mean, you mean I got to take the wrapper off of it? Well, that's some fine print. Why wasn't that put anywhere? I'll be darned. Okay, so what you're saying is you have to open it in order to get the goodness out of it. Is that what you're saying? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, you know, I got another thing. What are you doing? You're trying to get primary position here? All right. Yeah, I have another thing. I have another thing that's the same way, that you don't really see how good it is till you open it. And you know what that is? Bible. Did you know you could walk around with the Bible all your life and not get anything good out of it if you don't open it? Did you know that? Jacob, you surely knew that. You read it quite a bit, don't you? And when you open it, you see a bunch of good stuff, don't you? But you got to open it. You stop your booing or you're not going to get any candy. So I tell you what, so this week what I'm going to challenge you to do as you open your Halloween candy, that you open your Bible... And see, what's, yeah, and see what's good in it, okay? All right, what, what do you want? I, I, I want to You want to hold it? Yeah. How many are you going to take when you hold it? Um, okay, you hold it. All right, here, give Jace one. Say, here you go. Say, happy Halloween. Okay, here you go. Grab one. Grab, don't be shy. Okay, give one to Emma. You're on fire. Keep going. All right, yeah, give one to that guy down there. I forget his name. All right. Jacob. Oh, yeah, really? Jacob. I, I remember. And that's what you want? Okay, now, um, I think, let's see here. Um, I think Ellie needs one. You better go give one to Ellie. And let's see, oh, Zach's here. Zachary, do you see Zachary right over there? You go give that to him. He needs that. And let's see, oh, Nathan needs one. Go give one to Nathan, okay? He played really good guitar today. You know, if he keeps practicing, he may get good. All right. Wait, wait, wait. I, I wait. We, okay. What is it with you? You can't ever be happy with one. You, okay. All right. 
Now, let's see, Jacob, let's see. Did you give anybody any candy yet? Izzy needs some. You better give Izzy one. She's way back yonder. Oh, and, and, and let's see. Is there anybody else who needs a piece of candy? Sam needs a piece of candy? Okay, here, hold on. Let's get Sam an almond joy. Sam, do you like almonds? Sure. Okay, go give that to Sam. You won't like it. Don't steal it. You'll be incredibly disappointed. All right. So there's a few more. And as you go out, it's a first come, first serve type of basis. And uh, so we'll just make sure that we get this cleaned out so I don't eat any more. All right. Michael, did you need one? Okay, good luck, everybody. Watch this. I was close. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, and let's remember to not just have our Bible this week, let's open it and see what's good. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today, and we pray that you be with us and bless us during this time. Help us to remember how good your word is, and let us use it and see it every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, very good. Here, give one of these to your grandma. Got to score some bonus points. Oh, here, give one of these to your grandma. She actually likes those. You know, this may be all gone by the time church is over. I'll save this one for myself. Oh, it's, oh yeah. I was, I was looking forward to eating my candy while you were, doggone it. Ah, shoot. Who am I talking about? I forgot. So... Melchizedek, Melchizedek, however you want to say his name, is the character that we're going to do today. And if you remember on Fifth Sundays, I do a character presentation. So if you like it, it comes every Fifth Sunday. And if you don't like it, well, it's only every Fifth Sunday. So there you go. I know it's a very tired joke, but I continue to like to say it, all right? So anyway, we're going to talk about him today. And this is one of the more challenging character presentations I'll have ever done. And I'm going to tell you why because he has one line in the whole Bible, one, all right? So you want to talk about trying to put some flesh on a character that has one line in the Bible? That's a challenge, isn't it? So wish me luck. We'll see how we do. All right, here we go. Perhaps you know me and perhaps you don't. I'm the king of Salem. Now maybe you might ask, where Salem is, and so I'll just give you the common, the, the, the current name, Jerusalem. And I served as king a long, long time ago, in the time of the patriarchs. Um, you might know the guy as Abraham. I knew him as Abram. And I lived in that time and in that world where in, again, I'll just say Israel, so you know where we are, in Israel, or Canaan, uh, at that time, there were a lot of kings. There wasn't one king who ruled the land. There were a lot. And each king kind of ruled his own town or clan, however you want to say it. And when they, when they would rule their one town, that meant there were, oh, I don't know, 12 kings right in that one little area. And so as you could imagine, as kings wanted to kind of exert a little authority or power over another king, squabbles would break out. Now, me, being in Salem, we had some of the best natural defenses you would ever want to see in your life. Nobody bothered to mess with us because you weren't going to beat us. There's no way you're getting through. And besides, we're not the biggest town in the area. We're not the richest town in the area. Um, the risk reward is just not worth it, to be real honest. You can break our gates down for about four sheep and a cow. So if you want to try that, I guess you can, but most people passed us by. So we lived, really, a fairly quiet, peaceful existence. And I was very happy to be king of this place because it's a beautiful spot. It overlooks several valleys. It's just beautiful. And there, because of our peace, I was able to do more time in the priesthood than I was 
having to be a king, basically, and go out to war. So many times I'd spend my whole day around the temple, praying to the God Most High. That God is the one that I always knew was the God. And so therefore, that's what I did. Well, one day, here came King Bela, King Bersha, from Sodom and Gomorrah. And they came up to me and they said, hey, there's these kings from up north and they're giving us trouble. We need to go to war. We need to put them in their place. Join us on the field of battle so we can take them out, teach them manners. I thought about it and I went, nah, they're not bothering me. So no, I won't join you. Well, you know, there were five of them that decided they wanted to put these four others in line. And five against four would mean the five will win, right? I mean, I would have made it six. Woo! Well, anyway, the five went out, and they found out those four were really tough. And the four won. And they won rather convincingly, actually, to the point where they pillaged Sodom and Gomorrah took all the wealth of Sodom and Gomorrah, took a lot of the young people to serve as slaves in their future kingdoms or in their kingdoms. They, they just basically took the heart of the city and carried it away, both Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, I felt bad for them. I really did. And then I heard a tale of the guy named Abram and how his, 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 his nephew Lot had been captured by these other kings and was taken away. And how Abram and a few good men, you know, 318 or so, pursued these other kings, pursued them to their place. And with 300 men, he routed them. Routed them to the point where he took every last single ounce of the spoils back and where he took every soul back and he began to journey back towards Sodom and Gomorrah and Salem. Now, it doesn't take a genius to have heard what happened there and to think God is involved in that. I mean, God is involved. If one guy with only 300 people can go up against four of the most powerful kingdoms in the area and win, well, that's God, folks. That's God. And therefore, if he's that powerful and he has God on his side, he's definitely someone you want to make peace with, right? I mean, I don't want to make no war with this guy, and I don't want him to get cross at me. So I thought about it, and I said, well, what could I do? And I thought, and I said, you know what? Um, he's going to come back tired and hungry, thirsty. He's going to be exhausted. So I'm going to go out in the, in the valley in front of Salem, and I'm going to set up tents, and I'm going to bring out some of the best wine I've got, and I'll bring out good bread and fish and all kinds of good stuff, and I'm going to feed them. I'm going to feed them as a Thanksgiving meal, a Thanksgiving. And after I do that, well, surely, surely, he won't attack us. Because even if Salem is the most unassailable town in all of Canaan, if he can beat those kings... He can beat us. And so I went to the king of Sodom, who was licking his wounds, and I said, Bella, we got to go out, man. He's bringing back all your spoils. You got to go back and pay him homage. You got to go back and, you know, let him know how thankful you are that, that he's on your side. Uh, he gritched and he groaned and he kind of messed around. He thought, I don't really want to go. I said, well, just a minute. And I ran over to Gomorrah to talk to Bersha. And I said, Bersha, same story. This is the guy you want on your side. And Bersha said, forget it. 
I don't want anything to do with him. I'm like, dude, you got to be a good host. You have got to be a good host. You got to be welcoming. You got to be thankful. He's bringing your people back. He's bringing your spoils back. He's, this is good news. Come out and celebrate with him. Nah. So I went back to Bella and I said, Bella, you got to go, man. King of Sodom has to be there. Well, grudgingly, he finally went, is Bersha going? And I said, no. He said, well, if Bersha isn't going, I'll go. Politics. Go figure. So he walks out with me, and we go out there, and sure enough, here he comes. You know, it's not a big group. You would have thought it would have been this huge army popping over the hill. But no. It was just this dude and about 300 other people. That was it. Now, he had brought a lot of other people that had got captured behind him, and a lot of animals and, and plunder and all that stuff was riding on the animals, but really it wasn't as big a caravan as I thought, so I had plenty. And as soon as he arrived and he stood up in front of us, I put my arms in the air and I said, Praise be to Abram, for God has blessed him. And praise be to God, because he has allowed Abram to beat his enemies. Now, I'd like to tell you that that was all heartfelt. But there's a little fear in that, too. I mean, this is a guy I need on my side. This is a guy who just showed he can put the whoop on kings way more powerful than me. And so I gave him proper praise because, again, I knew that if God is on your side, who can stand against you? So I gave him praise, and I gave praise to God for using him. So I was doing pretty good, and I was feeling pretty good about life, and he began to partake, and I thought, this is going to end rather well. This is going to be a good meeting, and we're all going to be fine. Everybody's going to be fine. I mean, forget the fact that the king of Gomorrah was still pouting in his palace. Don't worry about that one. But, you know, at least Sodom would be okay. At least Sodom would be okay. And as Abram was eating, and you don't ever want to mix business and eating or politics and eating, you know, but here he is. He can't help himself. And the king of Sodom looks at Abram and he says, Abram, he always talked real regal sounding like somehow that helped him. I don't know. Abram, because I am so generous, because I am so benevolent, because I am a wonderful king, I am going to allow you to keep, oh, really? I'm going to allow you to keep all the spoils that you brought back. Every bit of plunder you can keep. But Abram, you return those people to me. Oh, dude. Did he really go there? I mean, can you think about that? Here's a guy who risks life and limb and his clan's, his clan's life to pursue after for the sole purpose of getting one man and his family lot and you, he comes back after that, tired, dirty, probably bloody. And the first thing you're going to do is tell him how benevolent you are, and you're going to let him keep a few things? Really? I was literally shaken, thinking, this guy's going to start with me and him and wipe us out and then go to the towns. He is. So I... I reiterated what I said. You know, Abraham, you are blessed. You're blessed by God. And God has used you. Therefore, all I offer is this feast. That's all I want. Take it, and let's be at peace. Well, a surprising thing happened. In that very moment, Abram stopped and he said, King, I'm going to give you 10% of all I got. 
I, I, I said, Abram, it's not mine. It was from Sodom and Gomorrah. We, we didn't lose anything. Salem had the doors shut, the walls up. Nobody, we didn't lose one cow. We didn't lose one sheep. We didn't lose one person. We didn't lose any gold. We did, we're fine. We're, we're, we're fine. We're square as long as we have peace with you. And Abram said, no, no. You recognized when you walked out who the battle belonged to. You recognized that God was worthy of praise. You recognized that God was worthy of blessing, that God alone brought the battle to me. And that right there means that you have a heart for God. And therefore, I recognize you as a priest of God. And I want to give you something. So take this. Well, again, it would be a very bad move to reject it, would it not? So I did. I took it. And the king of Sodom was as mad as a hornet. But he didn't say anything. Didn't say anything. And then Abram had a little more to say. And Abram said this. He said, hey, king. Bella, I got this for you. You take everything else back. All the plunder, all the people. You take it all back. I don't even want a strap of one of the sandals on the feet of these people. Because I want you to know something, king. That when I become rich, that when I become famous... When thousands of years later, stories are told about me, I want them to know that you had nothing to do with it. But it was by God and God alone that I was blessed. Wow. Wow. So he finished his meal and he left. The king of Sodom had sulked off long before that. And I cleaned it all up, and I packed up what was left, and I walked to my city, and I went to the temple, and I gave thanks to God. And I gave thanks to God. Now, you might think that's a pretty simple story, and there's not a lot there. But I want you to hear something in this story, because after it's all said and done, this is who we are, and this is what we've got. We have breath to give thanks to God. You have that right now within you. You have the ability to say, praise God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the life that you are living. Did you get it by your own accord? Well, some of you think you did. But let me challenge you and say, without God, the breath that is within you wouldn't even be there. It would be absent. And how well do you think you'd be doing without that? There's a dirt. That's where you'd be. God is good. All the time and all the time. That's a little better. That's a little better. I heard more on this side than this side, so... I'm going to come over here in case lightning hits, and that way we're all okay. No, I better not. I'll move off camera. I'm sorry. I'll stay back in the middle where I belong. But I'm telling you, your primary job, your first job, maybe even your only job is to give glory to God, to thank God for the life you have. And then to be so thankful for that, that you just can't help sharing with others. God is so good. Let me tell you how good God is. And then go. You know how good God is? I got candy. <laughs> you know how good God is? I, Teresa got like five more bags back at the house. You want to know how good God really is? She and the grandkids are going to go trick-or-treating and leave me alone with those five bags of candy. That's how good God is. I mean, I'm going to give it away. Every last Snickers. 
I lost the character, I'm sorry. But the point of the character I hope you heard, and that is that we should give thanks all the time. That's what he did. He, uh, he got over himself, he got over his fear, he recognized where God was blessing someone, and he blessed that same person. And because of that, he received a blessing himself. That's us. Recognize how good God is, call out that blessing, and then see that blessing for yourself. Now, we're not, we're not a church where we say, oh, God's going to give you a million dollars by the time. No, no, no. Maybe, but no. I've been playing the lottery now for 10 years. I haven't won yet. You know, the other day I was lamenting to God, and I said, Lord, I mean, I, d I don't ask for much, but why can't I win? Just give me one win. And he said, well, Scott, I tell you what, uh, meet me halfway. Why don't you buy a ticket? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so let's meet God. Let's meet God, and let's work together to give God glory and to share that with other folks. Now, one of the blessings that God gives us, that, that we have to think about it for a second, but it truly is, is the memory. Memory of those folks who have had impact and movement in our lives. So today what we're going to do is in our time of prayer, we're also going to lift up those people that are members of this church who have passed away in the past year. And Marilyn's going to read their name, and, and, um, and then I'm going to light a candle for them. And then when we're done with that, we'll just say a prayer. And I'll lead you toward the Lord's Prayer. But uh, we want to start with the memory of these folks. They're critically important in our lives. And we want to give God thanks for the time we had them. I know it's rough when we lose them, but thank God we had them, right? And we'll meet them again. All right, let's enter into that time. Annabelle Lobita. Louise Steger. Rodney Seal, Aaron Cortese, Paula Main, Shirley Gregg, Joyce Hill, <clears throat> Art Gady, Connie Estep, <clears throat> Sandy Bidwell, Mark Schmidt. And we remember all these people, but we remember especially the centering of Christ, who gave his life for us. So today, with all the other saints who have now given their life and have moved on to glory, we also want to give thanks to Jesus Christ, who gave his life, has moved on to glory, and intercedes for us before God. Let's take a moment of silent prayer, shall we? Dear Lord, we thank you for all the saints that have gone before us, for the example of their lives, for the faithfulness that they showed. Lord, we give you praise for their example. And Lord, we pray that we are challenged to follow the example that they set. We know that they now rest with you. And we know that in their life, they did not operate perfectly. 
or without sin. But the, you were there with them, and it was your grace and your blessing and your strength that enabled them to do what they did in this world. Lord, we pray that we never forget to be thankful for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us are great. Some we take for granted, like our next breath, and some hold a memory in our heart that will never dim, like a mother or a father or a spouse or a child. In all of these, Lord, we want to be thankful because you are good to us and you are worthy of our praise. So blessed be you for all that you do for us. And of course, we remember that greatest gift you gave, your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. In his life and in his death, he left teachings that we should follow. And in following them, we will find the joy of life, the blessedness of following you, and the security of knowing that our home is destined for heaven. What a blessing you give us yet again this day. We went from being strangers far off from you to your children. And so now, as the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ is the rock on which I stand. He keeps me safe from the sinking sand. He pulls me up from the miry clay. Christ is the rock. He is the way. Christ is the rock on which I stand. He keeps me safe from the sinking sand. Those that of him I will follow him. Christ is the rock. He is the way. sinking sand Oh, the thunders roll He calms my soul Christ is the rock He is the way My hope is built on nothing less I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. O Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Christ is the rock on which I stand. He keeps me safe from the same king's hand. Christ is the rock, he's the rock. 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 He is the way. Christ is the rock on which I stand. Christ is the rock on which I stand. Christ is the rock, he's the rock, he is the way.
Christ is the rock. I'm going to invite you all to offering time, and I want you to think about the story that uh, we just heard, where Abram, though he did not have to, chose to give when he was before God. Today, you all are before God, and I invite you all to give, not because you have to, but because God is good. And think about how good he's been to you. Let's share. Would you all please stand as we sing our hymn of praise, Glorify Thy Name. Abram had just had. Think it had a little adventure in it? Think it had a little trouble? Think it had a, well, problems. <coughs> Probably not unlike your week. Maybe not to the extent of the murder, I hope. But I bet a lot of other stuff has happened. 
happened this week? Sin and trouble and toil and all of those words. And we might come here a little tired, definitely dusty, in need of a refresher. Not so much for your tongue, but for your soul. To be reminded that God is still good and God is still king. And God offers to you today the same thing he has all your life. Grace. Accept it. And then go out and show that same thing to others. It was on the night of Jesus' betrayal as he gathered his disciples around him that during the course of the meal, Jesus took bread. And after breaking it and blessing it, he said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. In a similar manner, after the meal was over, Jesus took a cup. And he said, This cup is a new covenant. It will be sealed with my blood. Take, drink. So we come to this table to eat of the bread, to drink of the cup, and to proclaim the saving grace of our Lord and Savior until he comes again. This is a gift from God to the people of God. And the people say, Amen. Oh, we invite you during this time. Did I not have it at the table? Everybody knows what I say at the table. It doesn't matter. So do we need to redo the table for everybody at home? Everybody get your cups out. Whoops. Well, you know, there's a reason why I'm here, right? Uh, give you humor in your week. Um, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, we're inviting people. So we're going to invite you during this time as the song sings and we all stand that if the Spirit has moved you today that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to come down. And it's a simple prayer. We've prayed it in weeks before, and we could pray it if you come up. 
Or if you want to join the church, we invite you to come on down and we'll vote you in. It's just about that simple. We want you to feel part of the fellowship. Because God has shown us so much grace, we'll show grace to everyone else. That's our job. So let's stand and sing. Please come if you want. Come just as you are, hear the Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We have just a couple announcements, so I won't make you stand for those. I know the Broncos are playing, but they don't pray, play until 2.20, and if the Chiefs are playing, it doesn't matter, so I'm going to keep you just a few minutes. <laughs> the fellowship team is sponsoring a contest. We want you all to participate either as a team like the fellowship team uh, we're going to decorate our own door but ours isn't going to be judged a family you can get your family together or just a group of friends if these six of you want to get together we are going to challenge you to decorate a door in the hallway we have at least 18 doors we may have more than that the contest will start next Sunday we want somebody from your family, your group, or your team to draw a number, and that'll tell you what door you will be decorating. The contest goes until December 4th, so the doors have to be decorated by December 4th. And they will be judged by independent judges that don't belong to the church, and we will award a prize or prizes to the winners. So uh, we want everybody to participate as much as possible. We will commence this on December 17th at a Taste of Christmas Fellowship. And more information on Taste of Christmas will be coming. So we want you to all participate, so get your teams together. Dan? Is there a theme? No theme. It's just strictly what you want and how you want to decorate the door. It can be as simple or as elaborate as you want it. We'll go from there. Okay. On a, on a totally unrelated note, Teresa, do we still have that Chiefs wrapping paper? <laughs> do we have other announcements, Marilyn, or are we? Okay, does anybody have... I did see have... Sarah get awfully excited about this. Yeah. The door decorating. <laughs> I think we have, our, we have our early favorite here. Look out. Um, all right. Independent judge. We need those. We need those. 
I love it. I love it. All right. Any other announcements? I don't have any, unless you all do. So I, the benediction is kind of the end of the sermon. So give me just a second. Um, you might think that that whole thing between those three kings and Abram and God didn't mean a lot. But one of the kings was grateful and thankful and recognized God. And because of that, he was put into the line of Christ in Hebrews and has been elevated to that role of priestly. Now, think about that. That's pretty cool. The other two were burned up from fire from heaven. They weren't very grateful. I'm not saying any more than that. Go out and be grateful. God has blessed you richly. And God bless you all real good. And amen. Let's stand and sing. shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Because we will go out with joy. Shall go out with joy and be that forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field.